25 minutes and the dog suddenly realises <laughs> that you're home. Hello, old boy. <laughs> you are so old. You're a good guy. We always want more, don't we? We live just down there, out of sight of the trees. So here's the state of my eczema covered hands. Well, the slow worms have given birth, which means lots of micro wax worms and tiny worms. Whoa, and tiny little worms to feed them on. Look at that a baby legless lizard. Welcome back to another vlog. Three nights away in Norfolk for Jackie and I. And the dogs are coming too. It's not sunny, but hey, we've got used to that this summer, haven't we? So the summer's drawing to an end. Everything's sort of overgrown. As it is in late summer, that lovely sort of May, early June. The freshness is long gone. What a summer it's been. So you'll be watching this, it'll be September to me the beginning of autumn really the mornings are already autumn like and cool oh, look at this. still some beautiful flowers out but on the whole it's you know it's browning and, and overgrown the crops have all been cut the the straw bales are in the fields but we're in norfolk our go-to place for a bit of peace and quiet we're in our little pop-up caravan that we've had for a very, very long time. Don't think I'm gonna see any grass snakes despite it being good country for them. Unless we get a bit of sunshine. But enjoy this week's vlog. I'll try and bring you some of the beauty of the countryside. Some of the scenery. 
and maybe some of the wildlife. garden escapee brilliant nectar flower <laughs> and self sets easily it's escape look Look at this beauty, the wasp spider or wasp or weaver spider. A warm, a warm climate Mediterranean spider that in fairly recent decades has got here in the UK and has spread from a southern England species now not only to Norfolk but even up as far as Northamptonshire where we live and I'm sure beyond that. Harmless to us, looks a bit wasp-like to deter birds from eating it an absolute treat if you find a wasp spider here in the UK or anywhere, a good looking spider indeed. Too far away to see, but there's actually sticklebacks down there. Real live sticklebacks. Just like we used to get in Northamptonshire everywhere when I was a kid. Brilliant. Just like we get in Northamptonshire now, Sadly, red signal crayfish. Cracking creatures, devastating to our ecosystems. Look at it go, like a giant tank. Wow, what a beastie. Luckily the forecast said there's absolutely no rain today. I'm so glad they get it right every day. Here comes Fen, 14 year old Bedlington Terrier. Luckily the Bedlingtons have got a really good nose. Actually makes them a good falconry dog actually. But this guy here, pretty much blind. Totally deaf almost. That's, that's a play on words, isn't it? Almost totally deaf. And he's just wandered down the ditch. <laughs> he literally, he doesn't know if he's in loads of undergrowth now or on the path. But like people, Keeping on going and being active. Keeps him going on.
Well, we've got to pack away. First day of September. Forecast one hour ago said dry all day. Now it says raining all day. They just can't get it right, can they? It is hammering it down. Just what you want when you've got to pack stuff away. The weather forecast is a complete waste of time. So have a look at these invasive ladybirds. These are, nowadays, the, the, the grey squirrel to most of England is the squirrel. To kids, look, there's a squirrel. That's what it is. We know it's an American invasive species. It is the squirrel for most of England now, rightly or wrongly, unfortunately. I don't think it's going to go away. I think it's going to be like trying to get rid of rats. They're not going to go away. Invasive ladybirds now to most kids. Most kids remember their parents don't take them outside and do stuff with them. These American harlequin ladybirds, they're the ones around the Fulcrum Centre. They're the ladybirds we see. And have a look at just this few, how variable they are. There are umpteen different colour morphs of harlequin ladybirds. It's a ladybird, there's a ladybird, but yeah, invasive from America and they shouldn't be here at all. Vulture Awareness Day today, the girls have put in a huge amount of effort. We've got a great tombola going, they've got some amazing, amazing prizes. Let's see how it goes, the weather's okay, the wind's blowing in totally the wrong direction to give our vultures lift on the flying lawn. But they're going to do two amazing flying displays with vultures, educate people about vultures, and of course, well not of course, but they're also going to do a... They're going to show people how vultures, how clever they are, and how they can work out problems. So, unlike most of our birds of prey here, our vultures have brain food. The, the terminology's gone out of my head. Come on, Dave. Enrichment devices. They have various things where they have to work out and problem solve in able to get access to bits of food. Very, very intelligent, just like keeping a parrot or a raven. And any, any clever animal or really clever animal. They need that enrichment. They need brain food. Just watching the world go by often isn't enough to exercise their brains and keep them interested in life in general. Nigel Marvin is coming to collect a couple of four lion snake babies that I bred this year. That's thanks again to Dave, as I've already told you, at Rainforest Exotics. He's put him on to me. Um, so yeah, really nice to meet one of those, I say childhood, he's about 10 years older than me. So when he was in his 20s, maybe starting off his film career, I was a boy, weren't I? You know, when you're at that end of your spectrum of your life, 10 years is a big difference. And yeah, we live in a a snowflake society now. Where there are, oh, Steve Irwin was bad. He, he chased animals around and picked them up, stressing them out. Oh, just rubbish, honestly. And he, they said things like, you know, if you pick up a dangerous snake, kids will think it's okay to pick up a dangerous snake. Well, I've never met a kid that stupid that watches these things that has then got bitten by a venomous snake because Steve Irwin, Nigel Marvin, uh, oh my goodness. And the other great guy with a ginger beard, sorry, I'm rubbish with names. It'll pop into my head after this video, but you guys know who I mean if you're my age. Even today, if I post a picture or an old video where I'm tailing an adder just to, just to pull it back or set it down so I can get a quick snap of it, the Facebook, the social media mentality is, oh, oh, that poor thing. You shouldn't pick it up, you've stressed it out. I've caught, kept, collected snakes all of my life. It doesn't stress them out. What stresses these things out is being brutalized, gently tailing an animal, gently picking up a slow worm. Again, I see posts on Facebook where kids are holding a little slow worm and their parents are, oh, we found his slow worm today. Look at my daughter's face, she's enlightened and just, just in awe of the wildlife. And a barrage of abuse will follow on social media. That poor thing. It shouldn't. Why did you feel the need to touch it? Blah, blah, blah. They really are not humans with our worries and fears and anxieties. If you pick up a reptile gently, let it go where you found it, it will just carry on with its life. The same as if you're a fisherman, you catch a fish on a rod and line, you treat it well and let it go. It'll carry on with its life. Very often, you'll catch it again a little while later. It's that bothered. Interact with nature. For goodness sakes, get your kids interacting with nature because if you don't, it's gonna go. They say the kids are the next the future, they are. Get your kids rock pooling, get your kids lifting up rocks in the countryside, get your kids pond dipping. One of the healthiest things they could ever do. Just checking this enclosure, so this is off, off display and it's gonna need a little bit of weeding out very soon, this week for sure, 
because if any of the plants touch or get close to touching the top mesh, things will escape. The mesh is there to keep predators out, not to keep the livestock in. That's what the slippery sides are for. Here's our common lizard. So anyone that's followed this will know that we had common lizards and slow worms in here, as well as a variety of amphibians like green toads, spadefoot toads, marbled newts, and it got predated a couple of years ago. Something got in, oh, slow worms, all my slow worms are in here. We're down to, I think there's a pair of common lizards in here, fortunately, and a few slow worms, pool frogs, definitely, but I've never seen any of the other amphibians, but then I never disrupt it, and I never hear in the darkness of a summer's evening to shine a lamp and see. So that little guy's there, oh, I don't know, four or five inches long. Compared to the world of lizards, you might say, oh, what a drab thing these British lizards are. It's a common lizard, a viviparous lizard. And I can tell you now, absolutely fascinating, endearing, and soon become socialized to humans gawking at them. And as you can tell, they're not too bothered at all. Hoping for some sunshine, it's starting to poke through. But yeah, anything like this, we, any outdoor enclosure, you've got to manage it. So if you don't know who this guy is, you're way too young. You shouldn't even be on the telly. You shouldn't even be on social media. Tell me what kind of snake this is, Nigel. This is a false water cobra. When I was making a film called Jaguar Adventure, I caught one of these in the wild. It bit me for two minutes. <laughs> Got a little, they're venomous. They're in, this is a beautiful captive one at Icarus Falconry, which is a great place to visit if you can come. So this one isn't biting at all, but in the wild they bite. They're back fanged, it chewed for two minutes, injected some venom. I was bleeding all down my arm, but it was great TV. Bleeding all down my arm, but it was great TV it and a badge of, badge of courage. For us wildlife presenters. And to tell be us the after. How old is Benelli's eagles, Mike? Uh, eagle, Mike? About 18 weeks. So 18 weeks of absolute perfection. Now, this particular specimen, you could say was completely free or incredibly expensive because this is a project that Mike started how many years ago breeding Benelli's eagles, Mike? About six years ago. Six years yeah, ago. About. It's been very successful. Good morning. Beautiful morning. Just the best of mornings. That slight mist, early morning fog, if you like, breaking away to a beautiful blue. It doesn't look very blue on there. Beautiful blue sky. Still quiet peaceful yeah good day to be alive when it's like this in the morning we're just setting up again yesterday vulture awareness day the staff and the volunteers here at the Fulcrum center did us proud did icarus Fulcrum proud the girls put on some great displays talking about vultures they even did a talk with the vulture doing his going through his enrichment and that's really amazing to see for other people to see how clever they are working out puzzles to get bits of food as well as their amazing flying displays the tombola oh everyone worked so hard to get amazing prizes put in amazing prizes donate amazing prizes but yeah we had a really good turnout thanks to everyone that came to us for yesterday and supported the staff and everyone's amazing efforts to make that Vulture Awareness Day go as well as it did and basically achieve that really good, really good result for Vulture Awareness. What else can I tell you? Oh, in other news, I am busy, you know. I've got to go and clean out and feed a lot of birds. In other news, Kyle and Carly produced some beautiful lurcher puppies a few months ago and they've had people sending photos of the puppies now they're a few months old getting to see what they look like wiggy my favorite one the one i wanted she's won some dog show prizes as have two or three of the others at lurcher and terrier events and, and fun puppy de fun dog shows they look really nice really nice indeed look at this how cute is this now of course a highlight of my day was nigel marvin what a kindred spirit. We just spent the whole day chin wagging about wildlife, 
birds of prey, reptiles, reptile keeping, catching reptiles, the state of the planet. Great old gossip, definitely do that again. And he really selflessly just said, let's do a bit for social media, let's do this. And I said, oh, as well as the, as well as the four lion snakes you've come for, would you like a gift of a false water cobra? He said, I'd love one. Hence the video further along in the vlog, um, where I said, in that case then, I want a quick piece of camera. My favorite part, one of my favorite Nigel Marvin clips is definitely when he got bitten by a false water cobra uh, and carried on like a true professional. So we've kind of recreated that in a funny way. What else can I tell you? Hmm, Susie's looking good. So for those of you that watch the channel that are full, because I'll put this in a standalone video, but I've, I've ordered a new bird, not for this season, but for next season. The Fulcry Centre, since we took it over four plus years ago, nearly five years ago, has just absorbed too much of my time, in a nice way, but too much of my time, in so much as the winter is when, we, obviously we've got more downtime, and we renovate, and we fix, and we build. And time slips away. It, 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 it takes up so much time when you've got property like this to, to renovate, and build, and, and add new stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. And my fulcrum has suffered. So I own a fulcrum centre for four and a half years. And I've done less fulcrum than I've done for the last, yeah, 40 years or 30 years. So I've ordered a bird for next season. And that's going to be, if I get there, that's going to be a change of lifestyle. And we're going to do some proper fulcrum. So there's going to be a massive injection of new fulcrum material next season. But I'm also going to follow a friend this season, Mike, with his Bonelli's Eagle, as you'll see further in the video. And, and really up the fulcrum side of the channel with a lot more bird time, less face time, as you guys want. But anyway, today I've got a guy coming up to collect some more baby snakes and bull snakes and some of the baby Vietnamese blue beauty snakes. And they're, they're going fast. If you want some of those, you'd better get in touch with me pretty soon. But very sensible prices, very good quality, beautiful snakes indeed. Tom's just turned up. He's another big fan of the big colubrid snakes, dry mark on, falses and so on. And he's turned up to collect a pair of bull snakes and a pair of these Vietnamese blue beauties. And we decided that's a nice one, haven't we, Tom? We have indeed, yeah. A very blue animal. Sure. Look at that. Hopefully it's focusing. I can't see with my useless eyes. A lovely snake. So again, just like yesterday when Nigel was here, it's great to meet other enthusiasts that love these big colubrid snakes. What's your favourite, Tom? Of all the ones you got, I had to pick one. Um, pick one of your snakes. Black tails, creepers. Yeah, I think they're just the most awesome things to yeah. work with, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. personality wise. Definitely. Well, I often say, sort of, don't meet your heroes and things. I can tell you now, Nigel Marvin, what a thoroughly nice chap. Yeah, this isn't Nigel Marvin. <laughs> 